Welcome to Statics. This lesson will discuss some properties of vector addition and subtraction, then review the mathematical tools for calculating the resultant vectors using the parallelogram law and triangle construction discussed previously. First, with respect to vector addition, if I have two vectors, a and b, does the order matter when I add them? So here is a plus b, and here is b plus a using triangle construction. Look at the resultants for both configurations. We see that they are both the same length, meaning their magnitudes are equal. They are both pointed in the same direction. Therefore, the two resultant vectors are equal. The answer to our question is yes, vector addition is commutative. Now let's look at vector subtraction. Does vector A minus vector B equal vector B minus vector A? Here is A minus b. And now I show b minus a. Now I draw the resultants from tail of the first vector to head of the second vector. Note that the resultant vector in both cases has the same magnitude, but the sense is different. The heads and tails are switched. The answer to our question then is no. Here's another principle of vector subtraction. If I take vector a minus vector b, or if I just change the sense of vector b and just add it, I will get the same result. So, in other words, vector a minus vector b is equal to vector a plus negative vector b. Let's finish by discussing some ideas for solving vector combination problems. When using the parallelogram law or triangle construction, we end up creating triangles. Since in statics, our vectors are typically forces, we will call it a force triangle. Once we have our force triangle, we apply our knowledge of geometry and trigonometry to find our unknown side lengths and angles. If we have a general triangle, we need to have at least three pieces of information known before we can solve for the remaining unknown pieces. There are two basic tools we are going to use, the law of sines and the law of cosines. The variables in the equations refer to the triangle figure shown. In one case, you might know all of the sides but none of the angles. Or you might know two of the sides and one of the angles, or two of the angles and one of the sides. Between these two laws, and given three pieces of information, you can find any of the remaining sides or angles you need. Several example videos are provided for you to see the application of these tools in solving vector problems.